Hello, 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 and welcome to the wonderful world of microbes. Um, if you're tuning in, that means that you care about the microbial world among us. My name is Eddie Cruz, and these are my co-hosts, Jordan and Matthew. Hey, I'm Matthew. My voice does not sound as good in person. Hey there, I'm Jordan, and I'm a senior here at NC State. And so, uh, the, the main point of our uh, talk show today is going to be to distinguish the truth versus some of the misleading information that's out there about the microbial world among us. News companies don't always get it right. Exactly. We have a very interesting news segment for you right now. Okay, guys, let's start dissecting this one. 295 million Americans, majority of the country, carry cell phones, but what many people don't know is that they're carrying a lot of germs, and that's why Chris has the sanitizer out right now, because he has his phone with him everywhere. Our consumer correspondent, Elizabeth Leamy, gets the dirt. Uh, sorry, guys, I really had to stop it. I know we just started the video, but she literally just said a lot of people don't know that they're carrying a lot of germs. What she sh uh, what, it's interesting that she says that because what she should be referring to is the human microbiota, and that is referring to a whole plethora of different microbes that uh, colonize almost every surface in the body or around the body. Um, it is really just a normal part of your everyday life where you're coming into contact, breathing in or ingesting different microbes, um, and then they colonize the body. And so we have a little schematic for you guys. And so what we, I just drew is just, we just wanted to focus on the gut microbiota. And so we drew the gastrointestinal tract. And there's three predominating phyla that, um, of bacteria that dominate these areas, which are Firmicutes, Proteobacteria, and Bacterioides. Um, and essentially, these are just classes of microbes, um, but we annotated them with little pepper flakes of different colors, just to kind of give you uh, a little showing of how diverse and really the, uh, how widespread these are in your body. Um, and so, yeah. So we actually have the cell phone here they're talking about in the film. So when they have the... Uh so fun as saying gross germs on it, so um, as Eddie was saying, the, all the skin and different areas of your body that have uh, openings to the outside air are all colonized with bacteria, and they're not bad, they're not just like germs are going to hurt you, they're actually completely there and you're actually necessary to be a healthy uh, human. And so when you touch your phone, you're going to be transferring those healthy skin microbes onto your phone, and when you talk into it, to be transferring those healthy oral microbes onto your phone. So your phone is definitely going to be covered in bacteria but not necessarily pathogenic bad germs. So the microbiota of the skin shouldn't be considered gross like germs. So what does that have to do with phone screens? Yeah, I actually did a scientific project on this once. Uh, so I actually swabbed a friend's phone and uh, just to see what will grow um, from it. So we used uh, nutrient auger plates, which are essentially microbiologist tools to grow any bacteria that can grow uh, in very limited, of course, growth conditions because we put it in an oven that's at uh, about body temperature, so of course only bacteria that can grow that temperature would, would grow. Um, we only got uh, Staphylococcus uh, epidermidis, which is the predominant skin microbe on a healthy adult. Uh, so it's nothing surprising, no viruses or, or anything like that, yeah. You know. On this story. Our cell phones typically harbor more germs than an office desk, more than a computer keyboard, and even more than a toilet seat. Ugh. And unfortunately, researchers have confirmed that when you pick up a phone, about a third of those germs transfer to your hands. The fact that cell phones contain lots of germ cells hasn't made much of an imp. I tried to look up some um, research to kind of go look on the stats of further phone microtransmission rates, but I couldn't find anything that actually backed up their one-third claim. Um, an interesting trend that I did find was that there's a, there, there is a lot of clinical investigations in hospitals trying to look at um, orthopedic surgeons and how they're actually transferring microbes in between patients. And so the study was from St. Louis University, and they found that about 83% of um, orthopedic surgeons' cell phones actually tested positive for different pathogens that they um, had been come in contact with their previous patient. However, one thing that we do need to remember about this specific case or specific statistic is that it is from a healthcare setting, so that is uh, a, little, a little bias in as to why they found so many uh, pathogens. Like that, the CDC has actually reported some cases where students within labs have chewed on pens outside the lab when they removed the pen from lab and got sick. Uh, so in that case, it was the pen was in an environment not normal and had acquired, I guess, a bacteria on it from being in a lab. And so I guess um, whenever we're thinking about uh, these microtransmission rates, we can't really necessarily tell at this point, um, at least with cell phones, what exactly is colonizing them, but we can at least make an assumption as to whatever is present on cell phones is being transferred. Um, and this is further um, 
potentiated by the fact that we there was another study still from the orthopedic surgeon <laughs> hospital um, where they actually found that um, normal inanimate objects that are present in hospital settings are actually um, tested positive for the same pathogens and um, whenever a clinician came by they were transferring those pathogens and they were simpler everyday things that you find in a hospital like stethoscopes, bed rails, uh, things like that. Yeah and just like more similar to I guess what maybe more common people do but hopefully not is using the phone in the restroom. Uh, so there's actually a study that found that one in six phones had uh, E. coli contamination. Now E. coli is not necessarily pathogenic, but it is uh, only home to uh, like the gut usually. It's not found on the skin or, or anywhere else. So it does show that uh, you know, contaminants from your gut did make it onto your phone, which if you're sick or have other pathogens and you like, um, I don't know, uh, you could have like uh, something else. <laughs> well, what's that right now? But you could have something that's pathogenic that you could transfer potentially through your poop, and so that would be a good case to wash a phone if you did have to use it in the bathroom uh, for whatever reason, um, which I'm not sure what that would be. So the reporters make a good point of saying you should avoid using your phones when you eat, or just wash your hands. That way it doesn't really matter what's on your phone so long as it doesn't make it past your skin barrier. Pression on the public. I'm not a germaphobe. Okay. All right, you may be about to become one. Oh. We traveled to sunny Arizona to see what we would find on the phones of Arizona State students. Well, what does the X mean? That I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> X is over an acceptable limit. Using a handheld testing device, environmental science researcher Sherry Carlino was able to instantly tell people how much bacteria was on their cell phones. Anything over 100 got an X for unacceptable. Sorry guys, I had to stop this again. She really just said anything over one, 100 is deemed unacceptable. What does that even mean? Um, if there, when I looked into more into the sanalyzer, it's pretty vague. The system itself is uh, actually uh, produced and manufactured by a disinfectant company, which is a little biased in my opinion. Um, however, uh, what they're, the basic scheme of the sanalyzer is that it's um, detecting levels of ATP. And for anyone who may not know, ATP is actually just a simple biological molecule that is used as an energy source by almost any living cell. Whether you're a bacteria or an entire multicellular organism, almost every cell uses ATP as a biological currency. Yeah, so we actually have a little drawing right here of ATP. So it's got a nitrogenous phase, sugar, and three phosphates. And here's our sanalyzer. So a sanalyzer is just measuring this cleavage event that removes one of the phosphates, which is how the energy is released from the molecule. And so it's just seeing the energy is being released in general by something. It has no way to tell if this is being used by a dead skin cell that had just fallen off someone or a bad bacteria, you know, pathogenic something. So it just says energy is being used, doesn't say what. So it's really no way to know if it's actually you know, unsanitary. I love how they made sure to keep the guy who said, it means I'm going to die. <laughs> People who pay attention to phone cleanliness did better with scores like 83, Ooh. 59. Do you ever um, sanitize it or anything? I do, actually. And our lowest, 41. Good to go. Stop. They're the lucky ones because researchers have found the flu virus, staph infection, MRSA, and more on mobile phones. And since so many people handle their phones while they're eating, those germs have a direct path into our bodies. Young Aren't all those bacteria found commonly on your skin anyways? So isn't it a no-brainer that they'd be on your phone too? Yeah, but that's a point in and of itself. Um, they, they try to make the claim that all these uh, bad pathogens or bad germs um, are found on your skin, but they're a normal part of your skin microbiota, and so it's not really surprising that they found them. Um, another thing that was a little interesting is that some of the pathogens that they did find are actually, and they tried to correlate with, oh, you, you, when you're touching your phone, you're um, possibly putting things in your mouth, and then you're infecting yourself, but most of the ones that they mentioned don't have a fecal-oral transmission route. Um, and just for anyone who isn't as aware of the transmission routes, um, essentially whenever you eat anything or anything comes into contact with your mouth and then can be ingested, like necessarily meat, which could carry microbes, um, you're ingesting that and that's going into your stomach and your gut and then any microbes that make it past your stomach barriers can then colonize your, your gut physiology. Yeah, I'd just like to add to like the flu, specifically is a virus, so it's not be growing on your phone or anything like that. So that just shows that whoever is using the phone had been had had the flu, so uh, I think that's like not an important thing to really worry about. It's like flu on your phone, and like it's just 
Like, if it's already on there, then you're sick pretty much already. You've already been exposed. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> People are at particular risk because their phones are their constant companions, extensions of their hands. We're in the uh, mobile generation, and germs have adapted to that as a mechanism being transmitted that way. You share these devices, you share germs. More than half of the phones we tested had unacceptable and levels of germs, <laughs> and then we tested Taylor Broussard's phone. Oh. It was our worst. A reading of 442 means her phone contained something like a hundred thousand bacteria. This is That's like, really embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> so two things. I think it's interesting that they picked a college campus for their samples. Wasn't there a study that found that multi-user computers on college campuses harbored more bacteria than single-use personal computers? So would it really be a stretch to think the same could be said about cell phones? of college students as we're always in close proximity. The second being is they try to freak the audience out by saying a score of 442 is correlated to 100,000 bacteria. A recent study found that a single grain of sand can harbor anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 bacteria. If a single grain of sand can contain this much bacteria, it's almost surprising that a phone doesn't contain more. And to give you a little bit of perspective, we have a single grain of sand, roughly, contains anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 bacteria, compared to a cell phone, obviously in large, to give you a little proportion perspective. And it's almost, it's very surprising that the bacteria, or the phone doesn't harbor much more bacteria than the grain of sand. No need to be embarrassed, because last we tested my phone. I think you're being particularly thorough. I'm not. <laughs> These old flip phones tend to trap bacteria more than a flat smart screen. My readout, 170. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I should interview myself now. Miss Leamy, what do you think of all the germs on your phone? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I thought it was so clean. <laughs> Some companies now claim to sell antimicrobial coatings for phones and cases, but there are simpler solutions. For example, you can take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and wipe down your phone. If you're using some hand sanitizer, when your hands are damp, not wet, you can rub them over your phone. And don't share phones. If somebody tries to hand you their phone to look at pictures or something, don't do it. Try to get out of it. Not a great idea. Back to you guys. All right, Eli, thank you. And I can see a huge difference with your phone after what you just Won't did use it. Not at all. At least they gave some useful information on that uh, show. So definitely if you're in like a healthcare setting or you've, you've been in an environment that has uh, potential pathogenic bacteria, like you use the restroom um, and you're going to use your phone while you're on the toilet, uh, it might be useful to use common things like rubbing alcohol, uh, hand sanitizers, because those will eliminate those bad bacteria if they're on there. And also, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, disinfectant is an antimicrobial used on an inanimate or non-living surface, such as your phone or a table, or something like that, while an antiseptic is something that you use on a living surface like your skin. And so I think that if someone is in fact a germaphobe and you, you are constantly thinking about, oh god, all these bacteria, um, then fine, let yourself disinfect your phone every three seconds. Um, but for the general public, uh, as we've stated today, there is, uh, the populations of bacteria are really diverse and helpful to us in most, in most cases. And so, um, it's a little absurd that with the numbers that they quoted, and they didn't really have any fine, finite validity as they could not actually distinguish pathogenic microbes versus regular microbes. And so, um, if, you know, if you're just going about your everyday life, you're constantly coming into contact with different bacteria, and so whatever is being transferred on your phone is minuscule in, in, in comparison to that. And so, um, essentially, just keep living your life and you should be... Pretty healthy. <laughs> I think that we can all agree that while this video had some validity, it did overstate quite a bit of um, information. The best people, the best thing that people can take away from this video is yes, your phone is covered in bacteria, <clears throat> but that's nothing to be afraid of. Everyone has their own unique microbiota, so it really shouldn't be a surprise that something we use every day is covered in the same bacteria that we are. Regular disinfecting of your phone is more than enough to keep you healthy. And so that's it for, for today, guys. Um, thank you for joining us and the wonderful Wonder Microbes. I really hope that you learned something new today. If not, tune in next week. Bye. <laughs>